What we're going to be going over here is a deferred tax asset with a valuation allowance here. Now, when we're dealing with these deferred tax assets, we set up this valuation allowance here where it's more likely than not or a greater than 50% chance here that it will not realize some portion or all of this deferred tax asset here. So let's look at first setting a uh, determining what our deferred tax asset is now we're in this case here we're going to be looking at two years here year x1 here and year x2 and we have to look at it in terms of our financial accounting and our book accounting versus our tax accounting so this is how i have it laid out here so we're going to have this temporary difference here which is going to be some unearned revenue per our book accounting here uh, but it's going to be cash received for example for tax accounting purposes here and it's going to be um some uh, let's say some rent received in advance here so we set up this temporary difference here for year x1 for our tax accounting purposes here we recognize it in the first year here and it's going to be for thirty thousand dollars here and when i'm showing 30 here everything is in thousands of dollars here but for financial accounting we're not going to recognize it until the future years here we're going to start recognizing it in year x2 here through year x4 and this is where this temporary difference is going to reverse itself by $10,000 per year. Okay, so looking at our tax accounting here, uh, first off, we have to determine our deferred tax asset amount here. So that's the future, it's going to be a future deductible amount here times the future tax rate here. So what we mean by a future deductible amount here, uh, we're going to recognize the entire 30000 here in year X1, and that's going to increase our taxable income by that 30000 amount. But for year X2 and beyond, we don't have to recognize any of that taxable in, or that uh, revenue here. Therefore, it's considered a deductible amount. It isn't included in any future incomes here. But to determine our deferred tax asset, again, this future deductible amount times the future tax rate, this is the $30,000 worth of deferred, uh, the $30,000 worth of uh, revenue here that we received in cash times the future tax rate of 40%. I'm using this the same current tax rate here, 40%, and any future years here also 40%. So 30,000 times 40% is going to give us a deferred tax asset of $12,000. Okay, so now is the case here where we're going to set up this valuation allowance. And we're going to do that because uh, we re reviewed things here, this $30,000 worth of unearned revenue here or the deferred tax asset that we calculated here of $12,000. At the end of the year here, we determined that it's more likely than not that $5,000 of this deferred tax asset here will not be realized. So this is the case where we have to set up this valuation allowance for this uh, deferred tax asset here. Okay, so let's, uh, maybe what we have to do is let's just calculate our, our taxes payable here. So we're gonna have two years here, year X1, year X2. For our income before taxes, we start with that here, 350,000 here. So that would be based on our financial accounting or book accounting income. But we are gonna add in this uh, unearned rev or this revenue here we received in advance here, the temporary difference of 30,000. We're gonna come up with a taxable income here of 380,000. Okay, so that's for the first year times a 40% tax rate here. The, the taxable income 380,000 is gonna give us a tax payable here of 152,000. And then for our second year here, we have our income before taxes here. Uh, that would be our taxable income times a 40% tax rate, 148,000 here. So we've determined our ta for tax accounting purposes, that would be our tax payable, the current amount that's payable here. And for financial accounting, we can look at it up here, but we're going to actually do a plug on that. That's going to be based on our deferred tax access. Ac asset and our taxes payable. So let's go down and look at our accounts here. So what we have to set up is we have to set up our tax payable here, liability account on our balance sheet, a deferred tax asset here that we'll, we have calculated here. And then based on that, we're going to have some tax expense here. But what we're when we're talking about this valuation allowance account here, we have to set that up. And we'll look at, that's a deferred tax asset allowance here. And we'll look at that in detail here. And, base, and what we're going to do is first start with our taxes payable here. For year X1 here, we would credit it. Remember, we uh, 
calculated that to be 152,000 here. That was the current amount here of tax payable based on our tax accounting. And then for year X2, we calculated it to be 148,000. So you credit those amounts here for your tax payable. And then for your deferred tax asset, remember we calculated that to be $12,000 here. That was that $30,000 received in advance times the 40% tax rate. So we debit or increase our deferred tax asset on our balance sheet. That's an asset account here for $12,000. Now, the tax expense, that's simply a plug here. It's the balance between our credit here and our tax payable, $152,000, and our debit here of our tax asset of 12,000. So what we need is, we got the debit here at 12,000, we need another debit here to our tax expense here of 140,000. So 140,000 plus 12,000 here, balances of debit amount, balances with our credit here and tax payable of 152,000. And we do the same thing here for the next year here. Uh, remember our tax payable, we calculated that to be 148,000 and then deferred tax asset, this is where it starts to reverse, reverse itself. And it's reversing itself at $10,000 per year times the 40% tax rate is going to give us a credit amount or a reduction here in a deferred tax asset of $4,000. So now for our tax expense, we can just go and look at that. We have credit here of $148,000 here in our tax payable current amount here for year X2 here. And then we have that reduction in deferred, ta uh, deferred tax asset here, credit of $4,000. So uh, credit amount here, uh, we need $152,000 worth of debit or tax expense here. So debit or increase your tax expense here for $152,000. So that's simply how we come up with our tax expense here. Now, we have to set up this deferred tax allowance account. Now that is going to reduce our deferred tax here and it's a deferred tax asset account. That is a contra account here. So that operates uh, opposite here, deferred tax asset. And uh, that is, again, a contra account here. So what we're going to be looking at here for this valuation allowance, it's going to reduce our deferred tax assets carrying value to the realized amount. Okay, so for our first year here, remember we said we had the deferred tax asset here, $12,000, and then we're reducing it. By, we're saying that it's more likely than not that $5,000 worth of this $12,000 worth of deferred tax asset will not be realized. So what we had, the realized amount, that's what we really want to calculate here, uh, $12,000 minus the $5,000 that will be unrealized here is going to give us $7,000 worth of realized deferred tax assets. So what we do here for, again, your deferred tax allowance account here, you would just credit that or increase it here by $5,000. So the credit here, $5,000 is going to reduce the debit amount here, deferred tax asset for that first year of $12,000 to come up with the net amount here of $7,000. Now, let's just look here further in the next year. We didn't talk about it here, but we evaluate it at the end of each accounting period here. So let's look at year X2 here. And let's say we realize that another $2,000 worth of this deferred tax asset here isn't going to be realized here in year X2. So uh, let's just, in this case, we'd credit or increase our deferred tax asset allowance account here by $2,000. Okay, so we've got our deferred tax allowance, uh, allowance account here, uh, our contract account here, reducing our deferred tax asset. Crediting that here for first year, 5,000, second year, 2,000. But what do we need here for a balancing amount for the deferred tax asset uh, allowance account? What we do is we go and we would debit our tax expense. I'm breaking it out here. Uh, we could have gone right up here to our tax expense here. But what do we want to do and when we're dealing with this deferred tax asset allowance account? Whatever credits or debits here in your deferred tax asset allowance account, you're going to have a debit or credit amount here to your tax expense on your income statement. So let's just look at that. So for the first year here, we had a credit or reduction on our deferred tax asset or our increase in our deferred tax asset allowance account here of $5,000. What that does here, it increases your tax expense by that amount here of $5,000. Debit or increase your tax expense here by $5,000. So you what's, see what's going on here. You're redu reducing your deferred, ta deferred tax asset account here through this allowance account. And by doing that, 
you're increasing your tax expense. Okay, so we looked at year X1. Now let's look at year X2. Well, remember we realize there is another $2,000 worth of this $12,000 worth of tax, deferred tax asset that isn't going to be realized. So we've credited or increased our deferred tax asset allowance account here by that amount. Then we would debit or increase our tax expense. Again, that's increasing our tax expense. Same uh, rationale here as for the year X1 where we had the $5,000 that we said we're not going to, it's going to not re uh, we're not going to realize the deferred tax uh, asset account here. And what? And let's just go here. You were going to evaluate at end of each accounting period, which we did here. Now, we can further go on here and say, well, let's say, for example, the deferred tax asset. Let's just say we don't really need it anymore. We're going to realize, well, let's just say we're going to realize this total deferred tax asset amount here of $12,000 here, or whatever, whatever the total amount here. And we already had... Um, Re, uh, reduced it here by a total amount of $7,000. So let's just say we're going to uh, eliminate the deferred tax asset allowance account. So all you would do, whatever your credit balance here, then you would debit it out here by $7,000 or any amount of this here. But I'm just showing it here. Here's where we eliminate our deferred tax asset allowance account here, debit it here by $7,000. And then the credit amount here would go to our tax expense here say we're eliminating the deferred tax asset here, uh, the allowance amount here, so we credit or reduce our tax expense here by $7,000. So you see what's going on here. When you increase your deferred tax asset allowance account here, that reduces your deferred tax asset here on your balance sheet, but at the same time, it increases your tax expense here on your income statement. And then in the case here where we reduce it or eliminate uh, your deferred tax asset allowance here, that also that in case increase or reduces your tax expense here on your income statement. And where would this deferred tax asset allowance, we're not getting into all the details here, but uh, one reason where you might have set this up here or is that the amount of the deferred tax asset is a loss of the benefit. For example, you wouldn't be able to uh, use all the deferred tax assets, so that's why you're setting up this deferred tax asset allowance account. Example would be uh, say a net operating loss here where you couldn't uh, use the whole deferred tax asset here. So you would set up your allowance account or your contra account here. And then one last thing that we want to look here is let's go down and look at our balance sheet presentation. So what you would do is you would have your deferred tax asset. Let's just look at year one here. Uh, we have that at $12,000 here, the deferred tax asset. And then we'd have to subtract the allowance for the deferred tax asset. That's an allowance that we set up, that contra account here, $5,000. So the net amount of your deferred tax asset, that would be the net realized amount here of the deferred tax asset is $7,000. So let's just go back up to our accounts here. Again, the only reason you want to uh, set up this allowance account here, your deferred tax asset allowance account or the contra account here, is to reduce whatever amount you have in your deferred tax asset account. Only because you may realize that you, you're not going to be able to use this total deferred tax asset for whatever reason it might be. You're actually losing or losing the benefit here of this deferred tax asset. So that's why you set up the deferred tax asset allowance account. And then the other thing, when you when you're dealing with the deferred tax asset allowance account, whatever credit or credit or debit amounts you have in that, then you have to have a corresponding entry here to your exp tax expense on your income statement, debit or credit. So in the case here where we increased our deferred tax asset and it reduced the uh, deferred tax asset allowance account and reduced our deferred tax asset account here, uh, then we had to debit or increase our tax expense by that amount here. So you can see what's going on here. And then in the case here where you're going to eliminate or reduce your deferred tax asset because, or your allowance here on your deferred tax asset because in that case, you're, you're looking at the case here where you're going to be able to use some of this deferred tax asset. And uh, the, debit, the allowance account here, you reduce that at the same time the balancing amount or credit or you'd be reducing your tax expense. So you see how they're working here. Credit, increasing your deferred 
a tax asset allowance account here, then you're going to be increasing your tax expense here on your income statement. And this is the op the opposite's true if you're going to reduce your deferred tax asset allowance here. Then you're going to also be reducing your tax expense here on the income statement. Okay, so we went through this valuation allowance here. And just remember that's a contract account here. And you only set that up if um, you have some, it's more likely than not that some of the uh, deferred tax asset is not going to be used or all of the deferred tax asset is not going to be used. And more likely than not here is that 50% chance that it would not be used. But when you want to work with these problems here, just redo your current tax, whatever current tax is payable. And set that up here as your tax, uh, determine what that is here. Then you have to determine what your deferred tax asset is. And then based on the tax payable, your deferred tax asset, the plug or the balancing amount is going to go into your tax expense here. And let's look at that one other case here. Well, what you've seen here, when, just looking at it here, when we worked with our deferred tax asset allowance here, when we increased that, we increased our tax expense, and I'm just showing it here. Uh, you can see what's happened here in that first year here by setting up this deferred uh, this allowance account here crediting that or increasing it by five thousand dollars you can see that our tax expense increased here from 140,000 to 145,000 and then when we increased our allowance account here by two thousand dollars here for that x year x2 here you can see our tax expense increased here from 152,000 to 154,000 so you see what's going on here i'm not showing for the case here where we eliminated the deferred tax asset allowance account but in that case we would have whatever that amount, whatever we had in our tax expense here would have been reduced by the amount that we eliminated or reduced our deferred tax asset allowance account. So that's just the basic case here where you set up this valuation allowance here to do, reduce the deferred tax asset. If you have to, that is reducing the carrying value of the deferred tax asset to the realized amount here. And that's what we went through in this example. So that'll conclude our discussion here. Just the basic uh, definition and how you set up a, a, an allowance account here to reduce any deferred tax asset amount here, which the Deferred Tax Asset Allowance account is a contra account. So that'll end our uh, brief discussion here.